Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, allow me to greet you with the best of greetings. The greetings that are blessed by the side of Allah are the greetings of the inhabitants of heaven. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The honorable panel of judges, the competition committee, and the audience. First and foremost, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the abundance of blessings, mercy, and guidance. For only with its blessings are we able to gather here on this joyous occasion. May prayers and greetings continue to be bestowed on the great Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Distinguished guests and my colleagues, not long ago, on Wednesday, April the 21st of 2021, we celebrated Kartini Day. The commemoration of Kartini Day began with the Presidential Decree Number 108 of 1964 on May the 2nd, 1964. Based on the Presidential Decree at the time of President Sukarno, Raden Ajin Kartini was declared a national independence hero. Born in 1879, Raden Ajin Kartini Joyo Adiningrat is one of the female figures who contributed to the rise of indigenous women in Indonesia. Through her letters, she expressed all her insights pertaining the condition of society, especially women. Kartini wanted and hoped for equality between men and women, especially regarding access to education. Ladies and gentlemen, the age-old issue of equality seems to have not really been resolved. Whether we realize it or not, or whether it is acknowledged or not, gender equality in every aspect of life have not really materialized. The presence of a woman is often misunderstood, especially with an unhealthy mindset in which the role of women is limited to only matters of household, children, and domestic matters. This kind of paradigm views women as subordinate and second-class beings whose roles and thoughts are not really considered. It is safe to say that efforts have been made to make the position of women equal to men through various institutions, both formal and informal. One of the strategies taken to make this take place is to involve women in development. This strategy has been started since the 70s. Then, after the United Nations established the first decade of development, since then, almost all third world countries began to create ministries for women's affairs with the main goal of increasing the role of women in development. However, it does not determine the realization of gender justice. The main cause of this is the lower resources of women as a result of less than equal access to education. Unequal education, especially for women, causes them to be unable to compete with men in development. Therefore, many of the most important roles and positions in the government are still dominated by men. Furthermore, the loss of gender equality will actually be detrimental to ourselves. For example, in the smallest unit, such as the family, inequality will put family in a very fragile position. Because essentially, the family is run with a sense of responsibility and cooperation between the two parents, namely husband and wife. Husbands and wives are like two feet that must work coherently in order to reach destination. If one leg limps, it will affect our movement, which will slow down any progress. In a much larger unit, namely the state, it will also be disadvantageous if a country does not accommodate gender equality. Currently, the number of Indonesian women is very large. According to the 2020 population census in September 2020, Indonesia has a total population of 270.20 million people. Meanwhile, the female population is 133.54 million people or 49.42% of the Indonesian population. The large number of women should be in accordance with their existence in public sectors that are influential in determining important decisions and policies. It would be very unfortunate if women were not involved through various fields due to gender reasons. Men and women are indeed created with different physical forms and that should not be a hindrance. However, this issue would become a problem when gender differences cause a loss of gender justice, which leads to discriminatory attitudes. Distinguished guests and my colleagues, Islam as a religion 
really recognizes the existence of equality in every human being regardless of their gender. The main aspect that Islam is very concerned about is the problem of faith as the task of humans who were created to worship. It is said in Islamic teachings that every soul for what it has earned will be retained. From the Quran Surah al mudathir verse number 38. This indicates that in the afterlife, mankind will be responsible for his actions whether he is a Muslim or not. Allah values greatly the piety of mankind, namely by his deeds and not by his gender. Every human being is the same in God's eyes and is not differentiated. Before Islam came, the condition of women was very concerning. Women were prevented from inheriting rights. Wives were part of the inheritance of their husband, daughters were buried alive, and so on. When Islam came into the picture, one of its teachings was to release women from the shackles of evil. Islam views women as honorable and noble beings who have various rights as well as obligations. Islam also prohibits slavery and abuses of women. To sum up, allow me to end my speech by quoting one of the hadith of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. The believers who show the most perfect faith are those who have the best behavior, and the best of you are those who are best with their wives. It's all I can convey to you today. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.